service today, July 26th, is, uh, the 8th Sunday of Pentecost. I hope that you all had a good week and were able to enjoy the warm weather wherever you might have been. Thank you for all those who might be joining us for the first time or, and welcome. And uh, just so you know that the service runs, all the liturgy and hymns will be up on screen for you to participate with. Thank you for all those who join us week to week and I do hope you enjoy the services. Let us take a moment now just to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin with our call to worship. How shall we gather to God this day? That our spirits be humble and contrite. God will take all that we are and help us work for good. Even though we struggle and wonder if we are good enough, God sees our abilities and our loving hearts. Bring your hearts to God this day. May God touch our lives with peace and confidence. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, As the Deer. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing now our Kyrie from Setting 8.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hopes in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing now our canticle of praise, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. May the peace that passes all understanding be with you all. We take this moment now to share that peace together. We sing now our canticle of peace, Nothing Can Trouble, and we sing it through three times.
Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into, the, into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing now our scripture song, I Will Sing of the Mercies of the Lord. verse 5 to 12. A reading from 1 Kings. At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It is pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm for today is Psalm 119, verse 129 to 136. We will read the verses responsively. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your teaching. The second reading is taken from Romans, chapter eight, verse 26 to 39. A reading from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sights too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. 
What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who inter who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing our gospel acclamation, I love to tell the story. Our Gospel reading today is from St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is growing, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. 
Then in his great joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of the fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Sometimes we just don't know how to pray. Maybe we have prayed all of our life, but something happens to make it difficult to continue doing so. Maybe a prayer isn't answered, or a situation is so beyond anything we had expected that words just don't come anymore. We feel overwhelmed and silenced because of what we are faced with. Or maybe we never truly knew how to pray. Maybe it was something that was always a mystery to us. We could never wrap our minds around why we were praying, or it felt unnatural, or silly, or perhaps even pretentious. Why would God ever listen to me? We struggle with prayer as a people of faith. We struggle with how to do it, why to do it, and even just finding the time to do it in lives that are often incredibly busy. In terms of how to pray, I've seen numerous examples. There's a very measured, plotted way in which we pray in a Lutheran church service. It is formulaic, comfortable, and theologically sound. It is never ex exciting, nor always very personal, but it is edifying. Or there is the more aggressive, extemporaneous prayers of our evangelical brothers and sisters. Those prayers are exciting, deeply personal, and sometimes theologically questionable. For those of us raised in the state Lutheran tradition, this kind of prayer often makes us just a little uncomfortable. There's also meditation, where we quiet our hearts before God and say very little. If anything, we just wait for peace or direction or whatever it might be we are waiting for. These are but a few examples. The way in which we pray truly is a personal choice. Whatever works for us becomes vital in a functional prayer life. The why poses more of a question. Why do we pray? Do we pray because we need something? I will say from the outset that praying for a new desk bothers me a little. The, that seems to treat God as a kind of Santa Claus figure, and I don't believe that is God's truest function. But we do pray when we need strength or courage or peace. Often these things elude us, and it can be through prayer that we find grounding. Or do we pray for the sake of our relationship with God? Do we pray with a willingness simply to be open to whatever God may be about to say in our lives, and to reconnect with God? Or do we pray because we feel we should, or that we have, or that we have to, that it is expected of us? Do we pray because God has called on us to pray, and so we pray out of a sense of expectation? God asks it of us, so we do it. Finding time in a busy life is always a challenge. Our lives, are, our times of quiet are often guarded carefully, and to use further brain power to pray and focus on the moment with God, on this moment with God, just seems like it is too much. It may feel that way. We carve a time out to pray, but it is, if it is not something that we are willing to do, we can often come to resent a further encroachment on our time. In the end, all of this leads to two inescapable conclusions. One, prayer is something personal, something that should be taken seriously, and something that takes discipline in our lives to do on a regular basis. And two, it still doesn't answer how we pray when the words have escaped our lips 
and there is no peace or desire in our soul to even attempt to do so. I was struck in today's readings by the opening of the passage from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the, is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. It is one thing to outline all the various ways in which we can pray and the reasons we have to pray, and even the importance of finding time to pray. But it is quite another matter to address the reality of prayer when the world around us seems to be collapsing. How do we pray into a pandemic five months old and showing no signs of abating? How do we pray into the horrors we see around the world? I have tried to keep a litany of things we have experienced this year, both in society and in our family life, and I, couldn't, I could no longer even name them all. This year has been a year of increasing tragedy, and when I tried to work through the litany again recently, I ended up in tears. How can I or any of us truly pray when faced with the last seven months and with more difficult times ahead? It feels completely and utterly overwhelming. How can we pray into that reality? At this point, no pat answer can suffice. No easy answer that is meant to give comfort, but really only ignores or cheapens the reality of our current situation. There are no easy answers, not to prayer and not to the various crises that we are facing. It is often simply too much. And into that reality, we, all we can do is sigh and groan and grieve without words because that is all that is left to us. But as we do that, as we give way to our deepest frustrations and fears and anxieties, the Spirit still intercedes for us. In our weakness, the Spirit comes and gives voice to our pain and sorrow in words we cannot understand but that God hears. We think that we are not praying when words don't tumble from our mouths or we are not perfectly still. I beg to differ. In the tears of our broken hearts, we are praying in the most profound way possible. Perhaps there is no greater act of faith than to fall and tell God, I cannot take another step. I cannot. That truth, that absolute truth, is the most honest prayer that we can give. And the Spirit does indeed intercede in God's hears. I will not patronize you by saying how God will act for you in that personal moment of raw, intense honesty. I cannot say how God will choose to speak or act in that moment. I can say that when I have experienced those moments, those times when prayer just vanishes and all I am left with is raw fear or anxiety or sometimes even anger, I find God waiting for me. I find God there in the pain and in the sorrow, speaking the words that Paul so eloquently pens in the second portion of this epistle reading. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I find myself again confronted with a God who has never left me nor forsaken me even when I thought I was drifting away. I find again a God who is love, and in my darkest moments that love is what shines the brightest. Sometimes God's love is the only, th only light that I see shining at all. But that is my encounter when I'm at my lowest, when words escape and only sorrow remains. I do not assume that is the way for everyone. Our prayer life, along with our faith life, is a personal, powerful thing. To very briefly touch on some of the images from the gospel, it can seem like something so small. What is it to pray? Yet in the end, it can shelter in the worst storms of our life. It can permeate everything, and it can change the ways we look at the world around us. And when we begin to realize that, then we can grab hold and never let go. 
Don't ever think that just because the reality of this world can swallow us up and leave us gasping and uncertain as to where to turn that God is not there, that the Spirit does not intercede for us. Sometimes in those moments of pure truth and agony, we offer to God some of the most profound prayers through the work of the Spirit that we could ever have hoped to done in our quiet, peaceful moments. In these moments of weakness and truth, we can once again know somehow that God is still there, always there, giving God's own truth of love and life. Amen. We sing now our hymn of the day, That Priceless Grace. We continue with our affirmation of faith. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things, a mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers Treasuring the earth, may we live as a grateful and healing caretaker of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our spirit, you, your spirit helps us in weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give out comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially Vanola Anderson, Anita Holtz, Darlene Stoner, Janet Plystead, Art Balkin, and the family of Ed Handwerker. 
as well as those we name either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we remember today all those who are affected by the ongoing pandemic. I think especially of our brothers and sisters uh, in the various care facilities throughout pro the province, especially remembering um, the Good Southgate Good Sam facility. And as we have connection there through members and through our service there leading worship, we remember them very fondly and we pray that you would keep them in your loving care always as you keep all those who suffer right now throughout the world. Help us, guide us through these times, O oh Lord. Keep us looking out for one another. Keep us hopeful that one day we'll see the end to this. And may we be joyful when that day comes, celebrating again the joys of community and freedom and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God and community, holy and one, may we never be apart from you even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing now our offertory hymn. For by grace you have been saved. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. All your many blessings are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we may proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. Hi. I'd like to share for my time of Thanksgiving today um, a song in Tamil that I grew up singing in our church at home in India and as family gathered for Thanksgiving of birthdays, celebrations, we sang this song as a reminder that God is with us 
always God is with us in times of trouble. God is with us in times of joy. Uh, God nourishes and feeds us something we get from Psalm 23 as well. And one that I wanted to share specific, specifically today was because this is a song that I used to sing uh, as a lullaby for Dia and one that she remembers joyfully as well. So this song is titled Yenakai Jeevan Vittavare. Yenakai Jeevan Vittavare Yenodiruka Yerindavare Yenakai Jeevan Vittavare Yenodiruka Yerindavare Yenai Yendrum Vari Nadatuvare Yenai Sandika Vandiduvare Yenai Yendrum Vari Nadatuvare Yenai Sandika Vandiduvare Ye Supodume Podume Ye Supodume Podume Yenda Nalilume Yeni Lailume Yenda Pisasin so than a perigitalum, Sordu pogamel munselave, Ulagamum mami samum mayakitalum, Mayangidamel munerave, Ulagamum mami samum mayakitalum. Mayangidamal Munerave Ye supodume podume Ye supodume podume Yenden alilume Yenila ilume Yenden varvinile Ye supodume Pullulla idangalil me tiduvar Amar the tani rende nada tiduvar Atuma vei dinam te triduvar Marana palatakil ka tiduvar Atuma vei dinam te triduvar Marana palatakil ka tiduvar Ye supodume podume Ye supodume podume Yenden alilume Yenila ilume Yenden varvinile Ye supodume Mani der yenne kaive talum Mami samargi naritalum Mani der yenne kaive talum Mami samargi naritalum I swear yum yavum arinditalum Aga the van yendritalivitalum I swear yum yavum arinditalum Aga the van yendritalivitalum Ye supodume podume Ye supodume podume Yenda nalilume Yenila ilume Yenden varvinile Ye supodume And as the song says, Christ is enough to sustain us and to hold us. Thank you. We sing now our canticle of thanksgiving, You are my all in all.
receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Amen. I'd like to thank again today everybody who was involved in the service. Um, Lois for her wor wonderful work on the piano, um, for Susan who put our service together, for Prema who was back as our as our videographer today, we thank her for that. Um, also for Nikki for her reading. Uh, I would like to encourage you to uh, send me any, any time or stories of Thanksgiving that you might have. I know that's been going for a while, but I think it's still necessary to hear those times, uh, stories of people who uh, might have had some moment to be thankful. Um, those can be inspirational for us sometimes as this current world situation drags on to remember that there are still things to be grateful for, uh, thankful for, and that can give us a certain measure of hope. So I hope you have a good week going ahead. I hope the weather is good enough for us to be out and about, but do so safely as we um, continue this journey that we're on. Uh, enjoy the splendor of God's magnificent creation, and we'll talk to you again next week. We sing now our sending song, Stand in the Congregation. Go in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.